Warzone Solos is quite possibly the most challenging and definitely the most intense Warzone mode that there is. If you make a single mistake, are outplayed by just one player, that's it, game over. From the very second that you drop out of that plane, it's you against the world. Every single player in that lobby wants the win, but obviously, only one player can get it. If you want to be that one, the player who comes out on top against all odds, then you've got to know the tactics that are going to get you there. This video is going to be breaking down an incredibly tactical solo win, with a heavy focus on how you can rotate effectively and position yourself in such a way that you'll always have an advantage over other players. I'll also be including some general tips and tricks that will help you win gunfights and always have an edge over your enemies. So, if you want to know how to get more wins in Warzone solos, or improve your Warzone performance overall, then this is the perfect video for you. Right from the beginning of the match, you need to be planning your strategy and figuring out how to approach the game. I prefer to work my way into the safe zone from the outskirts, rather than land deep within it and wait for enemies to come to me. This is purely because I play at my best when I'm on the move. I'm landing in this area south of TV, as I'm both familiar with the landing spot and know that there's a great potential for loot here. This bank building can contain a huge amount of cash, perfect for getting my load out quickly and easily. As you can see, I'm working my way around the outskirts of this area, as it'll keep me in cover and hopefully keep my whereabouts hidden from any nearby players. It turned out that this was definitely the right play to make. You'll see that I suddenly stop moving and switch to a much more defensive playstyle. This is because I've heard a door directly beneath me, so I know that I'm about to have a gunfight on my hands. Audio cues can be a huge giveaway of enemy locations, but this does work both ways. This is exactly why I've crouched down and slowed my movement, to prevent this player from hearing any footsteps and figuring out my position. This means I can quickly rush down the stairs to clear out the enemy and catch him off guard. I know audio is incredibly unreliable in this game, but occasionally it can give you a great indication of enemy positions. It's something to both listen out for and to always be wary of. I had intended to complete this bounty contract in order to gather the much needed cash for a loadout drop, but pushing into this village when I'm not well equipped in terms of weapons or equipment isn't exactly a smart option. So I chose to stick to scrounging up cash from nearby buildings as this was much safer. In team modes, you can play much more aggressively as there's always players to back you up. This isn't really the case in solos. I would always advise getting yourself set up with equipment and the loadout before chasing down any enemy players. This is exactly what I was planning as I'd managed to gather up enough cash to call in my loadout. Seeing as I already have an MP7 for close range firepower, I figured that a medium range weapon would suit me best. Grabbing my Odin class means I can dish out some immense damage at medium range. Plus, I can tap fire enemies at longer distances thanks to the long range setup that I'm using. As ever, I've got EOD, Ghost and Battle Hardened for my perks, all of which are designed to prevent enemies from getting an advantage over me. Solos is all about preservation, not aggression. Hence why all my perks are dedicated to making me harder to kill. Pay attention to this corpse here. Notice the brown ghillie suit and the lack of armour plates. This is going to be extremely important in a minute. Just around the next corner, I happened across a player blocking the truck that I had planned to rotate in. This player has good cover, is clearly accurate and is burning my plates fast. A cluster strike buys me some time by forcing him out of cover but I'm never going to be able to close the distance between us. Suddenly though, a respawning player comes screaming into my field of view. Notice the brown ghillie suit? It's the same player that I ran across a few seconds ago, so I can be certain he's heading back for his weapons. Now I know he has no extra plates, but definitely has some firepower. This is exactly why I know that chucking some C4s is the right way to play this. There's no point me going for a direct gunfight when I know he has no protection from explosives. This is definitely one of those gunfights that perfectly demonstrates why paying attention to your surroundings is so important. Recognising this player meant I knew exactly what resources he had and how I should approach the gunfight. There is still a big problem though. 
the other player is still behind me and I have no way of challenging him. I'm also low on plates, so I've got to double back and try to scrounge up some resources. But this means I'm heading away from the safe zone. I could go into downtown, but that place is a death trap in solos, as so many players just love to hide in buildings and wait for you to wander into their trap. So, I make my way all around to the other side of stadium, hoping that that player has moved off to better ground. A new problem has presented itself though. I've got to rotate across totally open terrain, while still not having any spare plates. That's why I'm grabbing this truck and heading as far away from the next zone as possible. Vehicles are always dangerous in solos, as you're broadcasting your location for everyone to see. So they need to be approached with caution. Frankly though, I haven't got a choice, as crossing this ground on foot is a death sentence. Port is perhaps one of the only places on the map that is consistently abandoned in every game. I don't know whether it's just me, or whether the Warzone community seems to universally hate Port, but there is almost never anybody here. That's exactly the reason why I can risk looting up and try to get myself into a better position. If you're ever in a situation like I am, getting as far away from strategic positions as possible is a great idea. It's much better to have to make an extra rotation than to try and approach the match with little to no equipment. Unfortunately though, players have already looted up pretty much everything here. To make matters worse, someone had already taken up a position on the central rooftop which burned away my remaining armour and forced me to run for cover. Luckily though, a small pile of cash was my saving grace. This meant that I could finally stock up on armour and be back up to full strength. Despite this though, I am in absolutely no position to challenge that player on the high ground. He's got a far better position than me, and the gas will force me to move before him. The solution? Head out into the middle of nowhere. Hugging the edge of gas, Scrambling through meagre cover and avoiding buildings makes me incredibly hard to spot. This evasion tactic is incredibly risky though, so I would not advise it unless you have no other choice. Whilst I am indeed hard to spot, and the likelihood of there being an enemy out this far is incredibly low, if an enemy does spot me, then I have no cover and I'm as good as dead. There's no point to me pushing into these buildings in farmland either, as I'm likely to either get killed on the approach or have to risk being surprised by a camper. That's why I'm waiting, looking to see where the next safe zone is. Things really don't seem to be going my way though, as I now have an absolutely enormous rotation to make. To make matters worse, I suddenly start taking fire from farmland. I've got no cover, my back is to the gas, I haven't got enough plates to use, and I have no way of pushing this enemy. If you're in a situation like this, the best thing you can do is recognise your disadvantage and get out of there. I'm able to suppress this enemy, forcing him to back off and recover. This means I can sprint in the opposite direction and put as much distance between us as possible. It might seem like a weak or pathetic move to run away from an enemy, but that's just not the case. There are some gunfights in situations that you just can't win. It's much better to live to fight another day then rush headfirst at an enemy that you have no chance of killing. You need to know when to fight and when to walk away. Moving in slowly, using the gas as cover is the best approach to make here. The gas will force players out of their cover and protect me from any surprise enemies. I would absolutely say that the gas isn't something to be afraid of in Warzone. It can be a great tool if you account for how it affects player movement. It can turn into a giant wall of cover if you're comfortable moving with it. Don't be afraid to stick close to the gas, as it can offer you a huge amount of protection. This rotation method carries me all the way into farmland, where I can get myself into a slightly better position. This makes absolutely no difference though, as the safe zone continues to move away from me. I would safely say that this is the most distance I've ever had to travel in a solos match. Late game, the small safe zone forces the density of players up. Built up areas with plenty of buildings are likely to be packed full of players, all hoping that they're not rushed by each other. They can be an absolute death trap if you're in a weak position like me. That's why, again, I stick right to the edges of the gas. I am not equipped to fight any enemy players head on, so need to stay out of the way and hopefully take an enemy by surprise to pick up some loot. What makes matters worse though, is that this game ended in lumber, 
an area packed full of cover for plenty of players to hide in. I'm still hiding, still hoping that I can pick up an easy kill for some much needed loot. I've got only 3 plates, no self revive and only 1 C4, so it's safe to say that I'm not well equipped. Here though, things get very intense very quickly. In this safe zone, you can clearly see a building with a bounty contract in it. This is where I'm planning on heading as it offers some of the best cover around. Before I can even begin my rotation though, I've got a bounty on my head and a big problem on my hands. I cannot possibly stay where I am as I've got no cover and as soon as this player spots me, that will be the end of the match. My only hope is to charge headlong at this enemy and hope I catch him off guard. My only advantage is that I know exactly where he is, as I know where that bounty contract was located before. I'm able to fake pushing around the edge of the building before doubling back to rush this enemy and pick up the kill. This is one of those on the fly decisions that can make or break games. Staying still and hoping I somehow survived would only have gotten me killed, as I had to rotate straight towards this player. Acting unpredictably is a very powerful tool in Warzone as I'm willing to bet this player did not expect me to come straight at him. Sometimes, that's all it takes to turn the tables in solos. With the final ring ahead of me, I had intended to skirt out towards the back of this house in order to stick to the edges of zone. A different player was already ahead of me though, which forced me back into the house. This did give away his location though, and that gave me a clear advantage. Pushing away from this player brought me up to this chicken coop, the only man-made structure left in the ring. I know a player is behind me on the hill, which leaves me two other players to find. Gunfire reveals their location pretty quickly, which means I now know where everybody is on the map. I can quickly drop this sniper out of cover, as the Odin punishes anybody caught out like this. Now there's just a player behind me, and one up on the cliffside in front of me. With absolutely minimal cover available, this loadout drop is my only hope. But the player count drops, and I know the last enemy alive has just finished a gunfight right ahead of me. All it takes is a few shots from the Odin, and that's the game won. This battle sequence is a testament to how important it is to keep track of enemy players mentally. I knew where everybody on the map was, which meant I could position myself around cover for the maximum advantage. This game as a whole just shows how important tactics are when making rotations, approaching gunfights, as well as just making the right judgement calls. Throughout this game, I had to play tactically just to stand a chance of surviving. I was constantly on the back foot, readjusting my position just to stay alive. These tactics are what got me to the end of the game, and what allowed me to outplay the rest of the remaining players. I hope this video has shown you some principles and tactics that you can use to improve your own Warzone Solo's performance.